Farah Balana and welcome back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. The topic for today is a very interesting topic which is the Wagner's Law. Yes guys, in today's video I will be discussing all about the Wagner's Law, its background, its introduction, criticisms, diagrams, examples, in short all you need to know about this particular law. So let's get started. Also guys don't forget to like this video and do subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already. And do follow me on my Instagram account 5 Minute Economic for some interesting concepts. So let me first introduce this very law to you. As the name suggests, this law was given by a German economist, Adolf Wagner, who first observed this law in his own country, Germany, and then in the other countries. This law is also known as the Increasing State Activity Law. So what does this law basically states? It states that as the national income of a country increases, the public expenditure is bound to increase. Okay, public expenditure is the expenditure by the government on, you know, public goods and public services. So that will definitely increase if the national income of a country is rising. This law is closely linked to industrialization because it states that, you know, development of an industrial economy, like more industries coming up in an economy, will be accompanied by an increased share of PE. PE will here stand for public expenditure. So that is closely linked with industrialization. So this is basically what is Wagner's law. Now let me explain to you this law with the help of a very simple example. So here we are saying that guys, an economy is growing supposedly, okay? So when an economy is growing, we know that the income of the people are, is rising, right? People are earning more. And when people are earning more, definitely they will demand more. What will the demand? They will demand better healthcare, better education, better infrastructure, better sanitation, due to which now government funded programs for these services will rise and definitely their percentage will increase uh, of the government's expenditure on these particular services. So this is what basically Wagner's law is, guys. This shows a positive relationship between the economic growth or you can say the income of a country as economy grows, income rises. You know, the people or the citizens become much more affluent and then they demand more services from the government because size and scope of the public expenditure is totally dependent on this. These two rise and we see even the size and scope of public expenditure rises. So both are having a positive relationship. So I hope you are clear. Now what is exactly is Wagner's law? So by now I hope you guys are clear with the line or with the statement I can say. Growth in national income is accompanied by growth in government spending. That is what we've already studied, right? Both are accompanied with each other. Here we also discussed about the government expenditure. So government expenditure is not less. We know government has to spend on so many things. So we divide it into traditional and non-traditional functions. The traditional functions are basically like, you know, defense, law, order, what government is doing. So if these functions expand, government expenditure expands. Obviously, you know, more functions, they have to spend more on that. Secondly, there are some non-traditional functions also like government tends to spend on health insurance, on unemployment allowances, on old age pension of the people. So these are non-traditional functions and as these functions expand, government expenditure also expands. So these are, these are the types of government expenditure government spends on public goods like roads, you know, street lights, so many things government has to maintain and merit goods such as education also. So that, that's what, uh, you know, the government expenditure is all about. So the diagrammatic explanation of this particular law. Well, we now know that they both hold a positive relationship, which means that as income increases, our public expenditure also increases, right? Both are increasing. But what is the rate? Like, are they increasing at the same rate? If, you know, um, it took five years for the income to increase, will it take five years for PE uh, P e or public expenditure to rise? No. Well, here is the catch, guys. We should know that public expenditure increases faster than the increase in the per capita income of the people. So supposedly this is our income and this is our public expenditure. So we see how long this is taking to reach a certain point. This will reach faster because you know, a public expenditure rises faster. So let's come to the curve out here. On the X axis, we have real per capita income. And on the Y axis, we have the real per capita output also known as the public expenditure. So initially guys, just look, look at this uh, P line, which is the dotted red line. We notice over here, both are having a positive, you know, uh, positive curve, like a supply curve. Both are rising, right? Both are going upward. Y and P E increase at the same rate. This is happening initially, right? But after a certain point of time or after a few years, you can say what happens is P E starts growing faster than income. Due to which increase, we see this is this 
takes the shape of the curve. Here we can see that PE is growing much faster than the income is. And that's why now we have, uh, that's what I've written over here. And that's why we have this bent curve. Initially it was just a linear curve, you know, going upwards. But now we see since PE is growing faster than the national income or per capita income, the curve takes this shape. So I hope you're clear with this diagram. So now moving ahead to the exceptions and the criticisms of this theory. Well, guys, of course, there's an exception during an economic crisis or a recession. You know, at that time, we know that our um, national income is not rising. The poor capita income isn't rising. Yet, you know, government has to use fiscal tools. It has to increase the public expenditure to take out the economy of the crisis. So at that time, this is an exception to the law. Uh, Wagner's law and there are some criticisms of this theory as well we all know always any and any theory in economics will have certain amount of criticism so here it has limited application maybe you know Wagner just held this true for Germany but is it true for all countries well we're not so sure it neglects the impact of a war of course during war times um, this wouldn't hold true and normative theory because you know it's also said that it's a normative theory it's subjective to Wagner's decision but it's not always true okay so these are the exceptions and criticism but hold on guys the video isn't over yet the interesting part is now I'm going to discuss in just brief about India's scenario to Wagner's law so lastly guys coming to India's case study so basically we know that India has implemented various social welfare programs you know Aman Drega is one of the most famous ones I'm sure you know that and National Food Security Acts and many of such programs, right? So due to these programs, the public expenditure, the government expenditure has risen significantly. And it's said that because of these, you know, India has also faced with many of fiscal challenges, like how it's easier said than done, uh, you know, as national income rises, government expenditure rises, but that's not that easy that government expenditure keeps on rising. Government also has some constraints on its spending and it just can't keep on spending and increasing the public expenditure. So it's also said that India is a diverse nation. We all know there are so many states and you know the state-wise uh, per capita uh, income is different. So definitely state-wise government spending is different which brings in variations in the applications of the Wagner's law. So this is all about Wagner's law guys. We also will be studying the next video will be on the hypothesis regarding public expenditure given by Peacock and Wiseman and I'll see you then in the next video guys and thank you so much for watching this video and yeah thank you.